not recently user Sidefish ah, challenged me to do a Shepherd Tone patch. Well, challenge accepted. Hi and welcome. Today I want to show you how to make a shepherd tone patch on the blowfield. But first let's talk about the shepherd tone. The shepherd tone is a auditory illusion discovered by Roger Shepherd um, around 1964. By the way, Roger Shepherd died in May 22. This effect gives you the impression of a constantly and infinitely rising or falling pitch, which is of course not possible because um, if your frequency gets higher and higher, at some point it would reach um, a threshold after which you wouldn't hear it anymore. But as I said, it's an illusion. Let's hear it again. Actually, it's not that complicated if you know what you're doing. Let's start with a complete new patch. I'm only going to add a saw as the second oscillator, but at level zero. That's important. So what we want to do, or the way how this effect works, is that one oscillator is um, rising in, in frequency. The, the pitch gets higher and higher, and this oscillator fades out, while a second oscillator fades in exactly one octave lower, which is hard to hear, because when, they're, when they have the same note but at different octave levels, um, it sounds very similar, especially with um, frequency rich sources like, for instance, sawtooth. So oscillator one has to fade out and oscillator two has to fade in, increase the frequency, fade out and oscillator one fades in again. So that, that's what we, want, what we actually want to achieve. But um, that's not perfectly possible. So what we can do with the blowfield is that oscillator 1 fades out while oscillator 2 fades in. And at some point it jumps directly into the starting situation where we have 100% oscillator 1 and 0% oscillator 2. So the modulation itself is also a sawtooth modulation. Um, you will see what I mean. So let's go to LFO1, change that to sawtooth, decrease the speed to 12, and we have to gain control over the starting phase, which is exactly zero. This LFO will be the source of control over the levels of oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. The first thing we want to do is we want a constant, ri constantly rising pitch. So let's go to the modulation matrix and use LFO1 to control the overall pitch because both oscillators have to move um, with the same speed in the same direction um, while they're fading into each other. So let's choose some intensity of um, 34. Mm. 
So you can only hear um, oscillator one at that point. And now let's go to the modifier section and choose LFO one as the source for modifier one, a constant level of 32 and a multiplication as the operation. So this way we are shrinking the intensity of the LFO. We're going to look at that um, in a second um, in the simulator software. But first let's go back to our modulation matrix and to modulation slot two. Let's choose modifier one as the modulation source for level one with an amount of minus 45. And modulation slot three to modulate the level of oscillator two. but this time increasingly with 63. You can barely hear it, but there's this fade out and fade in at the same time, because we are modulating the level of oscillator one negatively, which means that with an increasing value of the LFO, the level decreases and oscillator two level is modulated positively, which means that with an increasing level of LFO one, um, the level of oscillator two also increases. And this way we get this um, this um, handing over of both oscillators. And now we can um, use some effects for blurring and masking this, this jump back from oscillator two to oscillator one, which you can also hear. So you can, for instance, use the chorus effect. And some reverb. With high pass 20 low pass 70, diffusion maximum, size maximum, shape zero, decay, let's say 90 and damping 80. You can still hear this this jump, but you can try to adjust all the values slightly to um, improve this this last jump of the loop. That's already a bit better. Now let's have a look on what I'm doing in the modifier. So follow me to the modifier simulator. As you may know or may not know, the modifier simulator is a little tool which I wrote um, to get um, a better um, impression um, on what's actually happening within the low field. Here on the left side, we have different modulation sources and modifiers one to four. 
And here on the right side, I can adjust some um, configurations to improve um, the, the display and the visibility. What we actually saw is LFO with a speed of 12, with a starting phase of zero, not a free phase. And I'm using a constant value within the modifier 32. And I'm combining both um, sources with a multiplication. So let's say in modifier one, I'm combining source one with a multiplication with source two. And now, of course, you can see that um, the visibility is not perfect. So we can go here to the zoom section and configure the zoom a bit. And I forgot to change the shape to sawtooth. So that's the sawtooth oscillator. And when we change the units of our display, you can see that's, that the speed is like six seconds, almost seven seconds. And when you activate modifier one, you can see the output of modifier one. The output is again a sawtooth, but this time a little bit shrinked. So the, the amount, the values are smaller. It's not slower or faster, but the, the range of modulation is decreased. And then we're using exactly this range as a um, control parameter for the levels of oscillator one and oscillator two. And that's already the whole patch. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make a like, leave a comment, Subscribe to my channel to watch even more videos, especially about the Blofeld and um, consider joining my channel as a member. There you can get access to even more videos. You can get access to the Blofeld modifier simulator software, which I wrote, and even um, some of the patches which I created for this beautiful machine. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.